in verse 30 says, So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass as he was worshipping in the house of Nish- Nish- Nishrok, his God, that Adra, Melech, and Sherezer, his son, smote him with the sword and they escaped into the land of Armenia. And Ezahadon, his son, reigned in his stead. Where are the enemies? I say, where are the enemies? They are all gone. But know the secret. The secret is keep your tongue. Keep your tongue. Keep your mouth. Bridle your tongue. If you are going to see good things, make sure that you are more quiet this year than you were years before. That you don't you just change your way of conversation. All those words coming out and pouring out every time, except your preaching. Except you are counseling, except you are praying, except you are praising the Lord, except you are counseling, advising somebody, except you are giving admonition. All the other times when an enemy is talking, when an enemy is bragging, just keep quiet, the Lord will fight for you. In Psalm 34, Psalm 34, I'm reading from verse 12, Psalm 34, verse 12, what man is he that desires life and loveth many days that sh- that, that he may see good. Keep thy tongue from evil. And thy lips that they speak no girl. It says if you want the good life. The abundant life. The miracles and the signs and the wonders. And the better life and the better blessings. And the better provision. It says keep your tongue from evil. And your lips speaking no, from speaking girl. Depart from evil. And do good and seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. Look up, brothers and sisters. You know, there are people that they pray, they pray a lot. But you know, outside, before they come into their sanctuary, they gossip and they backbite, they get angry, they beat now other, they cut now other people, they do a lot of things with their mouth. And then they ring their bell, they use bells in some of those places. Come on, it's a time prayer meeting is starting now. And after all the gospel, then they rush in and then they say, Praise the Lord. Then they're shaking their head and shaking their body and doing this and doing that. And they just pray for nothing in vain. They didn't keep their tongue. We will not be like that. That before you come to church and before you go for hospital, before you go anywhere, you know that your tongue is under control. Your tongue is under check. That's why it says, When you see, that wants to see good days and loves good days. Keep your tongue from speaking evil, from speaking God. There are some people that play with lying. I think they just take it like a game. They don't understand. That's why their prayers are never answered. They'll come, they go to our coordinator, they'll tell the story and tell the story and tell the story. And the, and the coordinator will think they are sincere. Will think that this somebody that came for counseling will begin to open the Bible and say, according to this chapter, according to this verse, after the coordinator has, then they tell another and all is lying. They just want to waste the time of the coordinator. And then after that, the coordinator again will open scriptures and advise them. And it's all lie. And then after that, say, coordinator, will you not pray? Oh, for, of course, I will pray for you. And the coordinator will pray beautiful, beautiful prayer. And then release them. And then they go empty-handed. Although the coordinator did not know that everything they were saying, they were just pulling his leg. They were just testing his knowledge. They were just telling a lie. Telling all those stories, all those lies. And then after that, they, they look at their lives. Their lives are empty. They have not bridled their tongues. They have not kept their tongue. Oh, whatever prayer we pray for you, when you've just told us a lie, when you just came to deceive us, when you just came to tell stories that are not true, God knows your heart. Whatever prayer we pray will not be answered. It will all be a waste of time. I pray that this year our lives will change. Look at First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. And be very careful the kind of stories you tell. Be very careful the kind of stories you tell. Look up for a moment while I'm talking about these stories people tell. There was a great man of God. And this great man of God, he, you know, he was a use of God in the word of knowledge. And then he'll say, you know, you have a problem there, you have a problem there, and then the problems will be solved. And these people, they said, look at this man, we're going to test him. And he came and they said, uh, uh, man of God, we have problem. I'm telling real story, true story. I never tell you any lie. They said we have uh, this and that, and the man of God looked at them and said, "No." In fact, they said they had cancer. 
The man of God said, no, you don't have cancer. No, but we went to the doctor. And as we went to the doctor, he tested us. And we have cancer. Oh, the man of God said, okay. Since you say you have cancer, you didn't really have cancer before you came. But since you say you have, now you have. And those people had cancer later. Be very careful. That, you know, what are you, what are you going to gain by just, you know, coming to tell a story? You know, somebody comes and he says, I have ulcer. And he didn't have ulcer. And he just tell his story. You know, pastor, pray for me. I was, you know, like this. And he just tell his story. And I have ulcer. And he didn't have ulcer. Be very careful. You know, sometimes they come and they say, you know, pastor, I've been going through this a lot. I've been going through this. I prayed for a wife. And then this. And, and it's only a story. You know it is not true. And God is watching. This year will not be a year like that. A year when we don't understand the presence of God. We don't understand the promises of God. And we don't understand those children of Israel. They said, we're going to die in the wilderness. They died in the wilderness. It was their mouth. It was their mouth. You want to bite on your tongue. This year, so that the blessings of God will flow in our life. We don't want to play with poison or play with lying. Don't you know it says all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. And God is no respecter of persons. Don't come and tell any story. I don't mind. You know, if you want to tell me any story, I'm, I'm there all the time. I've had all the stories I could hear all my life. Any story you tell me, I don't mind. Even sometimes when I know what the game you are playing, I just smile. Because I'm going to bridle my tongue. And I just smile and say, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And then I see you smiling too. Then you think you've got the pastor because your story has sunk in into him. You don't understand. I know. I know. But be very careful. It can cut off blessings away from your life. I pray God will have mercy on you. Amen. You may go good. Amen. Amen. Hey, let's look at this. Let's, uh, uh, First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. And his leaves that they speak no girl. If you're going to have the miracle, the breakthrough, the breaking forth, then it says, You keep your tongue from evil, and then your leaves that they speak no girl. Let him eschew evil and do good, and let him seek peace and eschew each. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their, unto their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against them that, what? Do evil. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 26. James chapter 1 verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious and brightleth not his tongue. You see that? If you want miracles, you want the better things to happen. This is a year of holiness. This is a year of humility. This is a year of honesty. If you are lying, that's not honest. What will you tell a lie for? A child is crying. And then you say, to stop that child crying, then you tell it. A lie to the child. Stop crying. I'm going out now. I'm going to buy this. But you know it's a lie. You hinder your miracle. Your wife is complaining. I say, you never think about this. In you. you never do this. You never, ah, I'm going to surprise you this year. Just to keep her quiet. I'm going to surprise you this year. I'll do this. I'll do this. And, and you know it's a lie. You hinder your miracle. Your wife is saying that, you know, it's only your people you remember. Only this and only this and my people are. Ah, my honey, you know what I'm going to do this year? You'll be surprised. Just wait for me. And you know it's all a lie. All a lie. You're going to hinder your miracle. What do you tell lies for? You know, sometimes it's between you and the workers who have employed. And they're saying, no increment. I will see this that we're going to stay with. Ah, just work. Just work. As we gain this percentage, this percentage, this year. Huh, what you're going to have? You'll not be able to contain. And you know it's all a lie. But this year, there's no lying. 
Whatever the reason, whatever it is, what you told lies in the past, you know, and you are conscious now that all liars shall have their part, lick the bones of fire and brimstone, and you hinder your blessing, your miracle, by telling lies, and therefore your life is just going to be plain, very honest, very open, obedient to the word of God, loving, incorruptible, new, excellent, separated from the world and sanctified. It's going to be a year of holiness. That's why it says, If any man among you seem to be religious and bright, let not his tongue, but deceiveth his soul, had this man's religion is vain. All the prayer will be vain, will be nothing. It is lying in our lives. Look at chapter 3 of James. James chapter 3 verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, many talkers, many teachers, many advisors, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation for in many things who offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle, control the whole body. Behold, we put beads in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the sheaves which Though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hem, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among her members, that it defileth the whole body and, and setteth on fire the cause of nature. It's the tongue that sets life on fire, sets families on fire, sets the church on fire, and brings conflict, disagreement, confusion, commotion between, between the leader and the followers. It's the tongue, a world of iniquity, set it on fire because of nature, and it is set on the fire of hell. Every kind, for every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It takes the grace of God. That grace will have this year in Jesus' name. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith cause we men which are made after the similitude of God. Can you think about that? Somebody is cursing people, abusing people, insulting people, degrading people, belittling people, stamping people down, criticizing people. After all that negative talk, then they come, hallelujah, praise the Lord. We are standing on the promises of God. We are going to win this year. But where? How are you going to win? With all that kind of garbage coming out of your mouth, you curse men, you insult men, you belittle men, you criticize men, you condemn men, and then after that now you come and say, we're holding on to the promises of God. It doesn't work that way. If we're going to have the better things this year, was we'll bridle our tongues. We're going to do it. I said we're going to do it. And then it says about there in verse 10, Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. So to be, does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear woolly berries? Either it vine figs, so can no fountain, but yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endured with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation, good conversation, good conversation, his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. If with your, the words of your mouth you show you are devilish, with the words of your mouth you so, show that you are satanic, how can you then come before the Lord and say, I'm, I'm claiming my, my blessing, there shall be showers of blessing. Showers, they don't come that way. It's when you bridle your tongue, you control your tongue, and your life is according to the word of God. That is when the showers will come. 
And this year, we are getting ready for the showers. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom which is from above is first, what? Pure. And then what? Peaceable. And then what? Gentle. And then easy to be entreated. You know, the people of God who are expecting miracles, they are easy people. They are soft people. They are gentle people. If you had offended them five years ago, ten years, they have forgotten about that. Now you can you can walk with them and live with them. But you know, somebody wakes up in the morning and nothing has happened today and is showing hatred and bitterness and is aggressive against you. And you are wondering, what's happening? Because we didn't, we have not met today. We are meeting for the first time today. And the fellow is aggressive and posturous and over, overbearing. Oh, he's remembering what happened last year. What happened the other time. And he's still behaving like that. He's still the old creature in the new year. But it says the wisdom that is from above. is most pure and peaceable and gentle. And it says it's easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruit without partiality and without hypocrisy and the fruit of righteousness and so on in peace of them that make peace we're going to make peace and we're going to be peaceful people in jesus name it's only those kinds of people that will be able to carry miracle in their conversation miracle in their mouth a miracle out of the things they say let's look at first Kings chapter 17 and see how men of God carried miracle in their mouth because they bridled their tongue. They bridled their tongue. They bridled their tongue, controlled their tongues. In First Kings chapter 17, verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand. There shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. That man of authority. You didn't hear him before this time. He was not a careless fellow talking here and there. He bridled his tongue. Look at this same chapter, verse 16. Verse 16. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which is spake by Elijah. That man carried authority. Because he bridled his tongue. It was in the house of that woman with the son. But he wasn't, you know, talking, talking, talking. He bridled his tongue. And because of the bridled tongue, that's why the power was always manifested. Look at verse 24. And the woman said unto Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. The child died, and Elijah just went there and spoke the word of authority, and the child rose again, because he had bridled his tongue. This year, you'll bridle your tongue. And as you do, miracles will flow out of your mouth in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 22. Mark 11 verse 22. And Jesus answered, says unto them, Have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, if he has not been saying some other negative things before, if he has been bridling his tongue, keeping quiet, holding his peace, then you just come, and the first word coming out of you is the word of power, the word of promise, and the word of authority. It says, Very I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have. I said he shall have. He shall have whatsoever he says bridle your tongue and then you'll keep the authority therefore i say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have the point number three the guarded promises the guarded promises of blessed treasures blessed treasures James, sorry, Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, we're looking at verse 12, Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 12, 
Then says the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it. I will hasten my word to perform it. Another version says, I will watch over my word. I'll protect my word. I'll guard my word. I'll watch over my word to perform it. The word of the Lord will be performed hastily, very quickly, soon in your life this year in Jesus' name. The guarded promises of blessed treasures. I will hasten my watch. I will perform it. Isaiah chapter 55. I'm reading there from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and budge, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be. So shall his word be in your life, that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The word of the enemy will not take effect in your life. The word of those who want to crush you and destroy you will not take effect in your life. But the word of promise, the word of power, the word of prosperity, the word of provision, and the word that the Lord is saying in your life, to bring blessing to your life, that's the word that will take root in your life this year in Jesus' name. The Lord said in Matthew chapter 24 verse 35, Matthew 24 verse 35, every promise has given us, every prophecy has given to us, verse 35, Matthew 24, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The words of Christ will be fulfilled in your life, in your family, in your business, in your spiritual life. And this holiness the Lord has granted to us abundantly this, this year will be evident in your life in Jesus' name. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Ezekiel chapter 12. Ezekiel chapter 12. I'm reading to you from verse 25 and verse 28. Ezekiel chapter 12 verse 25 For I am the Lord I will speak and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass 